KUAM News Headlines is presented by Calvo's Insurance, serving Guam for 80 years. Matson and the Adahi Tanu Program. Cars Plus reminds you to put your phone down while driving. Distractions won't get you there. Heads up, Guam. IP&E, fueling excellence. McDonald's of Guam, I'm loving it. And King's Restaurant, located in Timuning and Dededo. Always open, always local. Coming up on Primetime Friday, the Verona Hotel has a history of not paying its employees. Chris Barnett gives you a closer look. Plus, your government has been awarded a $1.9 million federal grant going towards increasing school safety measures. And the Commander-in-Chief approves disaster declaration for the island. Hi today, everybody, and good evening. I'm Jason Silas. Thanks for watching or streaming us. These are tonight's top stories. Well, it is quite the familiar story, the Verona Hotel not paying its employees. But just how familiar is it? Chris Barnett has more in our top report. The Verona Hotel has quite the track record of not paying its employees, but Polaris Guam LLC, the company that owns the hotel, has never been punished for wage and hour violations. According to documents we got from the Department of Labor by way of Freedom of Information Act request. According to these documents, 15 wage and hour complaints have been filed against Verona since 2013, but those 15 complaints have affected over a hundred different employees. DOL Director David De La Sola tells KUAM News the agency's priority is compliance, not punishing employers who don't comply with Guam's wage and hour laws. People run into financial difficulties, both sides, both employers and employees, and our resolve is to make sure that we come up with a resolution that's equitable for both of them. DOL docs show in 2013 a complaint was filed with local Department of Labor in an attempt to collect back wages for 61 employees. Four months after that complaint was filed, it was referred to U.S. DOL. It wasn't a Merry Christmas for Verona workers in December of 2015 as a complaint was filed for the collection of back wages due to 17 Verona workers. This case marked closed by DOL almost a year later in September of 2016 after Verona paid wages due directly to the employees. It's not clear why Verona was not penalized. Verona employee RJ filed a complaint in November of 2017 and reached a settlement with the hotel the next month in December. In 2018, four Verona workers filed three complaints with DOL 10 days before Christmas. The case marked closed by labor on December 21st. In 2019, one employee filed a complaint in March for back wages, and almost two weeks later, Verona paid the employee. And in the most recent case, as reported on KUAM News, 16 employees filing with DOL for wage and hour violations. As we reported, the workers paid the very next day. Enter local labor lawyer John Bell who has a few workman's comp cases going against the Department of Labor, and he says labor, by law, can fine wage and hour violators a 12% collection fee. The law also says, quote, each day a violation continues shall constitute a separate offense. They have the ability to assess that 12%. And if you don't, if you do nothing other than ask nicely for the employer to, to do what the law already requires, I, I get the fact that that's better than nothing. I get it. But if you, do, if you don't penalize the employer at all, what does that teach all the employers? Ironically, a couple days ago, federal labor officials signed on to assist local DOL with wage and hour compliance. Again, compliance being stressed, not enforcement. What it shows employers is we have nothing to lose by violating the law and, in, and making an actual business decision to not pay our employees and basically see if we can get away with it. Because apparently they can, right? They, they literally have gotten away with this for years. And what about De La Sola's assertion that employers have financial difficulties too? And that back wage complaints should be settled in a way that's fair for both workers and bosses? You shouldn't be in business if you can't pay your employees. For Guam's News Network, Chris Barnett reports. Also tonight, saying no more to sexual misconduct on Guam and in the region, a group of students from the University of Guam have put together a Sexual Misconduct Awareness Regional Toolkit, otherwise known as the acronym SMART, to stand up against sexual violence. Carmen Victoria Chalahi has more. Consent is like swimming. If you're still struggling with consent, just imagine, instead of initiating sex, you're inviting them for a swim. That's the analogy students from UOG's Master of Public Administration class are using to teach the community about consent. 
Part of Project No More, with the Guam Coalition Against Sexual Assault and Family Violence, the goal is to educate the public. According to the tools, consent is a, quote, freely given agreement to engage in sexual activities. And without consent, it is considered sexual misconduct. Taylor Taitagui explains. Consent comes in many different shapes and forms. And just because it was consent yesterday doesn't mean it's going to be consent today. Just because someone said yes last week doesn't mean they're going to say yes this week. You know, it just consent is a timing thing. It's a certain thing. And that's what people need to know. According to statistics, Guam has the third highest number of reported forcible rapes per capita in the nation, with 68 reported rapes per 100,000 people. But these students believe many more cases go unreported here on Guam and in neighboring islands. The main goal is to have this be distributed throughout our region. Translated into Ponapayan, Chukis, and Palawan, Taidagui says it's about using familiar examples to empower survivors to speak out. Most importantly, we want to reach out to the victims. Like We're but a small piece of a bigger movement to let victims know that it is okay that people are out there that, who do understand, who are willing to listen to these issues because these are it's a really big thing and everyone needs to get involved and help. The curriculum is set to be used in classrooms in coordination with a mobile app that provides additional resources. Learning new ways to combat sexual misconduct, Taidegui gives advice to fighting back. To stand up for the victims, but just as a bystander, you know, from what we know, from what we've been researching, you know, we're here to listen to your problem and we want to help in the best way we can. You can find more information online. Reporting for Guam's News Network, I'm Carmen Victoria Cherlahi. Our next story comes to us from the Vatican after Pope Francis has issued a new church law to address the clergy sex abuse scandal that's rocked the Catholic Church. The new policy makes it mandatory for priests and nuns to report sexual abuse and the cover-up. The decree sets out procedures and timelines for investigations, including those against bishops, and requires every diocese in the world to establish an office with which to deal with abuse allegations. It mandates that dioceses develop simple ways for victims to report, seeks to protect whistleblowers, and puts the onus of responsibility on the Vatican to respond quickly. Now, the new law does not mandate reporting to police or to prosecutors, although it does say local churches must adhere to the reporting laws in their own countries. Now, locally on Guam, there have been more than 200 cases filed in court alleging child clergy sex abuse. Also tonight, the Consolidated Commission on Utilities is holding a special meeting to hear a legal brief on its controversial pay hikes for top GPA and GWA management. Independent counsel was brought in to review the issue and recommend a response to the AG. Attorney General Levin Camacho says approving the raises during a closed-door executive session in November was illegal because it violated the island's open government law. Outside counsel Vince Leon Guerrero advised that while the commission may discuss evaluations in executive session, he does agree with the AG that it may not discuss salaries. Because of that, he also agrees that the raises should be voided and the money should be repaid. Leon Guerrero also found that bonus payments to unclassified employees, such as the one to GPA General Manager John Beneventi, are also prohibited. Meanwhile, speaking on behalf of the 1,000 petitioners, outspoken critic Ken Leon Guerrero urged the CCU not to approve what he called unjustified pay raises. The bonuses and raises had ranged from $10,000 to as high as $25,000. The CCU did vote to rescind the pay raises and bonuses for the GMs, legal counsels, GPA assistant GM for operations, and the board secretary. The commission did not discuss whether it will reconsider the raises at a later time. Well, Attorney General Levin Camacho does join dozens of attorneys general across the country in backing federal legislation that would give licensed cannabis-related businesses access to the federal banking system. AG Camacho says the Secure and Fair Enforcement Banking Act would reduce the likelihood that they will become targets of crime. He also adds the measure would also improve the Department of Revenue and Taxation's ability to regulate and monitor cannabis-related sales and revenue. The act also has the support of 38 attorneys general across the country. In April, the governor signed legislation making adult recreational use of marijuana, of course, legal on Guam. Well, next Wednesday, Congresswoman Maxine Waters, who is chairwoman of the House Financial Services Committee, did announce that this Wednesday, I should say, that Guam Congressman Michael Sinicholas as vice chair of the committee in the 116th Congress. He was elected to serve to, by committee Democrats. According to a release from U.S. House Committee on Financial Services, Sinicholas said, quote, the appointment is a testament to the committee's focus on inclusion and openness to new talent, end quote. He also adds that he's going to honor the trust of the chair and committee that's been placed on him with good old-fashioned American hard work and territory flair, as he said. Also tonight, federal help is on the way for February's Typhoon Wu-Tip. You might remember that storm system. 
As President Donald Trump approved a major disaster declaration for Guam. According to our governor, the declaration provides federal aid to supplement recovery efforts that began immediately after the typhoon's damage. The funding will go toward projects such as debris removal, emergency protective measures, road systems and bridges, and utilities, among other. While remaining vigilant, the neighborhood watch group for Ordet Salampago helped a woman who was a victim in a home invasion. That incident occurred Thursday on Naki Street in Salampago. The preliminary investigation suggests that at around 9 in the morning, the female victim was home alone, and when she exited from the restroom, she noted an unknown male within her living room. The victim asked who he was and why he was in her house, and according to GPD, during the time of the conversation, the victim was able to text her neighbor's chat group. A neighbor, along with village mayor Jesse Gogi, were able to come to her aid and detain the unknown man until GPD arrived. Arrested for home invasion and felonious restraint was 29-year-old John Salas. He was booked and confined. This case has been forwarded to the Office of the Attorney General for prosecution. In other news tonight, a stolen credit card has led to a woman on the run and drugs inside a hotel room. On May 8th, police were called to the Royal Orchid in Tumon, where William John Panala is accused of using a credit card that did not belong to him. He tried to pay off a room balance with the card used to hold a reservation, but came up short. Court documents state that he later returned with Karina Lynn Cruz Barnes to complete the payment. Police went to the room and found Barnes inside. As hotel staff cleaned up, they found several suspected meth and other paraphernalia. She told police that she was staying in the hotel room because she was, quote, on the run after violating her, her probation and missing her court date of her active family violence and child abuse case. Penalo was recently released on pretrial house arrest under the condition that he stays away from drugs. Barnes was charged with possession of drugs and will for failure to appear in court, while Penalo was charged with identity theft and drug possession, both in the commission of a felony while on federal release. Also tonight, Guam Agriculture's forestry units continue to tackle those spot fires within the Cross Island Road and Santa Rita area. On Thursday afternoon, forestry along with units from the Guam Fire Department and the Navy Fire Department responded to the grass fire in the southern region. Residents are reminded that burning vegetation is prohibited during a high fire danger rating period and without a permission issued by your village fire station. According to Department of Agriculture Director Chelsea Munyabrecht, more than 100 acres were burned as a result of the fire. Well, we are going to take a break. Please stay tuned. There is much more prime time when we come back. There are more ways to experience Guam via KUAM News, giving you what you want, when you want, and how you want it. From smart devices, Alexa, what's in the news? Here's your flash briefing. Over the web, on mobile, on streaming platforms, with immersive, interactive formats, and via social media where it's more than just content, it's conversation. More ways to keep you informed and entertained whenever you want it, wherever you are, on whatever device you're using. value relationships because when we commit I love you God until you're 80 until you're 90 until you're 100 forever we are in it for the long run so you can enjoy the moments that matter because when we commit to relationships we never stop caring Calvo's select care health care that is always there for you The most delicious union of all time is now on Guam. Kentucky Fried Chicken and Waffles for a limited time at KFC. MTO, professional janitorial services with a warm hospitality touch. MTO gives that gift year-round. Pressure wash roofs, pressure wash driveways, lawn service, home cleaning, carpet restoration, office cleaning, commercial cleaning, commercial window cleaning, floor care. When cleaning is in order, MTO has you covered. Call 647-6861 to inquire on how you can receive the maintenance you deserve. MTO, celebrating 30 years with you, Guam. Welcome back to Primetime. Gov Guam is set to receive a $1.9 million federal grant, which it plans to use to boost school safety. The Department of the Interior says the money comes from discretionary compact impact funding, which can only be used for educational purposes. Adaloop says it intends to use it to provide much-needed upgrades to GDUE's communication systems, as well as other needs. By way of a news release, the administration's School Safety Partnership Program team has been meeting with key stakeholders since February on ideas to keep kids safe. The Interior Agency will award the money after a detailed plan is properly submitted. <clears throat> Speaking of education, the iLearn Academy Charter School made the grade. The school received word that it had received initial accreditation from the Accrediting Commission for Schools, Western Association Schools and Colleges. 
Initial accreditation is for schools that meet WASC criteria for full accreditation and have a history and support system indicating a high-quality program that can be sustained into foreseeable future. The status change follows a visit in March by accreditation officials. iLearn Academy Principal Rachel Stake says this is truly a testament of the hard and committed work the parents, teachers, staffers and their administrative team provide daily as well as year after year for Guam's students. Well, also receiving their initial accreditation from WASC is Astumbo Elementary School, along with JQ San Miguel and Talapoho Elementary. GDOE Superintendent John Fernandez says he's excited to see that the educational programs at those schools continue to be validated by WASC and to know that the accreditation process will continue to promote quality education for all students. In all, 39 out of the 41 GDOE schools, about 95% of them, are now accredited by WASC. Elsewhere tonight, recognizing the men and women who protect and serve our community, Governor Lou Leon Guerrero and Lieutenant Governor Josh Tenorio proclaimed May the 13th through 17th as Guam Police Week. The island's Magahaga said that the men and women in blue have the safety of the island community in their hands and that it is a responsibility they all take extremely seriously. I have been, as governor, the last four or five months, gotten to know really the police safety um, department and the programs that we have out there and I'm very honored and proud to say that they're working and I know you get criticisms out there but that is life we just have to move forward and work better and expand and strengthen our forces so that our island is a safe place. GPD will have several community events throughout the week, and during the signing, it was also announced that Officer Jerome E. D. Santo Tomas was selected as Police Officer of the Year. The Supervisor of the Year is Sergeant Felix Berto Camacho Jr., with the Manager of the Year being Sergeant Norbert Sablan, and Civilian Volunteer Police Reservist of the Year, Officer Raymond Fernandez. To all the men and women of the Guam Police Department, both uniform and civilian, thank you very much for your support and uh, your continued support to, to keeping our island and. Uh, our island safe. Also signed today, a proclamation declaring May 20th through June 2nd as Click It or Ticket National Seatbelt Enforcement Mobilization. DPW Office of Highway Safety encourages everyone on the roadways to wear seatbelts, with Agency Director Vince Ariola saying that a 2018 seatbelt survey indicated that 92% of drivers and front seat passengers were observed to be properly wearing their seatbelts. We all know the advantages of using seat, seat belts. We all know the advantages of using the correct and proper uh, child care um, restraint systems. And so I, I think as the years go on, it's just a matter of time until we get 100%. Let's check in now with our friends to the north. Here is KSPN2 News in Saipan with regional headlines. Half a day Guam. Here are the top headlines for CNMI. ISIS is... is, is uh, you know, uh, uh, an, a problem, it's, it's a disease in the community. Crystal methamphetamine, commonly known as ICE, is a well-known problem in the CNMI, harming individuals, their families, and ripping away their life. I'm not going to say and lie to the people that there's no ICE on Tinian. There is. We need help also from, from, from the other departments, the major the, the, big departments in, in, in Saipan to, to help us, uh, help our staff down here to procure necessary equipments, you know, what not, to easily detect, deter and apprehend these ICE dealers in our community. Countless island leaders have talked about putting an end to the ICE epidemic. And with the zero tolerance policy, the problem has decreased significantly, but it is still there. I, I, I'm, I'm a strong believer that that uh, it's zero tolerance, shouldn't be zero tolerance. Family, no family, if they're, they're using that as an excuse of whatever economic, you know, financial situation and they're turning over to this to use, to deal and whatever, that's not an excuse. It does not justify him to continue to be a part of this community and, and poison our kids. Mayor Aldon says the main goal is to get to the heart of the problem and stop the drug from coming in altogether. Improvements in enforcement in Saipan, there is, I will, I will give them credit that there is a drop. But when you two happen, yeah. there was an open gate, a gap. Yeah. And that's my concern. 
But Mayor Aldon says now that Saipan Customs have brought canine units into the airport and seaports, there is better control on ice getting transferred in and out of Tinian, which he hopes will put an end to the epidemic. Saipan Customs is here and they're doing their routines on, on, on bringing out their canines and searching all this either airline, airport, a seaport. And I'm glad and I've been asking for that particular uh, specialized unit to be implemented in Tinian. I did that when I was in the legislature for two years. I was asking Customs to please take note of what we need in Tinian, which was the canine. For more news, visit SaipanTV.com. For KSPN2, I'm Ashley McDowell. And also tonight, recognized for her tireless work with local veterans, the governor presented the Ancient Order of the Chamorai to Dr. Joan Gill. The good doctor has worked at the Veterans Administration Guam Clinic since 2002 as its full-time psychiatrist. And her work goes beyond the VA clinic, as she's also worked at the Department of Mental Health and Substance Abuse and did that for a decade starting in 1992. Along with family, friends, and members of the 35th legislature, several grateful vets were in attendance to help thank her for all her help. Dr. Gill will be relocating to the state of Wisconsin. We also thank her for her service to Guam. Well, please stay tuned. We are back right after this. This bag gives him food cred because now everyone knows that when they have that craving or they're just looking for the perfect deal, well, they just need to follow Steve. Follow him all the way to the new McTerry Deluxe at McDonald's. It's an all-beef patty smothered with teriyaki sauce topped with lettuce and tomato on a sesame seed bun. For a limited time, price and participation may vary. Legends aren't born, they are made. And during our Jeep Celebration event at Cars Plus and Mighty, you'll receive up to $6,000 in accessories for the purchase of a new Jeep Wrangler, Motor Trend SUV of the Year. Customize your new Jeep to the way you want it. Or how about a new Jeep Grand Cherokee? Save up to five grand. Or save up to $7,500 on a new Jeep Compass Sport. It's our Jeep Celebration event going on now at Cars Plus and Mighty. Cars Plus, driven by you. KUAM Sports is presented by Triple J. We're here at Dot Rental Manila for our Athlete of the Week. Today we have coach and jujitsu competitor Joey House. Arlene? Congratulations on being Dot Rental's Athlete of the Week. Who would you like to donate this check to? Thank you very much. I'd like to donate this check to Tossa Inc. And can you just talk a little bit about what you're doing here, uh, giving back and, and helping with the community? Absolutely. So I'm here teaching the Wim Hof Method. So it incorporates breath work and also putting people into ice baths, teaching people how to stay calm in the chaos of what happens to their body using your breath. And so we do different breathing techniques, teach people how to fully use their diaphragm when they're breathing, and in doing so, really teaching people how to handle stress in a really effective way that you can implement tools and techniques to do. So between learning these different breath work techniques and also using the ice bath to really model what it's like to be in this scary situation, just like before a competition or before doing something scary, when you get in that ice bath, it's going to change your breathing in this kind of panic breath. And so we teach people how to really focus on taking calm, relaxed breaths during this moment of chaos. Tell us a little bit about your background as far as being a competitor. So I've competed in some of the biggest tournaments in jiu-jitsu. I also was a wrestler before coming to jiu-jitsu, so my college wrestling background really built in a competitive mindset for me. And so when I've been doing jiu-jitsu, getting to compete in some of the biggest tournaments like the Eddie Bravo Invitational, Ultimate Mount Warriors, uh, the Deep Waters Invitational, the Finishers Tournament, just these big tournaments in this submission-only movement, uh, same thing, you're going into a match with somebody who is 
trying to choke you, break one of your limbs. And so being able to stay calm in a situation like that, it's invaluable. All right, well, congratulations. Stay tuned to our next Dar Red Zone Athlete of the Week. KUAM Sports Athlete of the Week is brought to you by... Guam's men's national rugby team will be leaving Ireland tomorrow to Hua Hin, Thailand to compete in the Asia Rugby Division II Championship. Guam, Kazakhstan, Thailand, and the United Arab Emirates are all competing for a chance to move up to Division I. We've always traditionally been known as, as quite a, a physical side, so we've had uh, strong forward packs and you know, we've you know, been able to really physically impose ourselves on other teams. Um, being promoted in Division 2, that makes it a bit more difficult because the teams were playing a lot more experienced, um, a lot more physical themselves. So we've got a good, a good balance side. We've got you know, some exciting backs, we've got some speed, we've got some, some real players with X-Factor. Um, we've got some guys that have been playing on the mainland, which, which helps because they're playing week in, week out. Guam is currently ranked 70th in the world. Kazakhstan is ranked higher at 62. United Arab Emirates at 71. And Thailand sits at 77th. They've been up to Division I um, and then opted out of the last tournament. So, and and then that, that was the case with a bunch of the other, um, other two teams that we could possibly face in the final if all goes well with UAE. Um, but with that being said, it's, it's going to be a tough one. All of them have really, really good uh, things to bring to the table as far as their team goes. I started Bonita Baby in 2014. Starting a new business was very daunting, but I knew I had my family behind me. And that helped me push through that fear. Just like family, Docomo Pacific believes in my business. They give me a reliable connection and offer more value to help my business succeed. Startups begin with better business bundles at Docomo Pacific. Call or email today. Bonita Baby plus Docomo Pacific, better together. Triple J says yes. Easy financing? Yes. Easy trade-in? Yes. Fast and friendly? Yes. Find the car of your dreams like our Mazda CX-3 at only $19,995 or the Honda HRV at only $180 per paycheck. Get top market value on your trade-in, explore payment options that work for you, and get pre-approved instantly. We'll even go the extra mile to deliver your vehicle to your home or office. Triple J says yes. Just click, pick, drive, and purchase your next vehicle at TripleJGuam.com today. Triple J. Customers first. Closing out a productive school year, these students, staff, faculty, and parents over at Mount Carmel School enjoyed the annual coronation and carnival day. The event, now in its 62nd year, is held in the school's courtyard and featured game booths, carnival treats, face painting, clowns, magicians, and so much more. They had us there, and thank you for inviting us down to Agate. We love our friends at Mount Carmel. All right, we have tonight's birthday shoutouts. All right, everybody, if you were born on May 10th, happy birthday to you, and especially happy birthday to Elijah Jude Leongro Antalan. Happy birthday number 15, Elijah. We love you. Say all your family and friends. Also, happy birthday to Lish Mendiola, our number one wife and mother, the Malaysian sensation. May God bless you on your special day. We love you. Say Mark, Ashton, Cody, Sophie, and Logan. Hope everyone goes into this weekend having a fantastic birthday. Those are awesome nicknames, by the way. Our guys in the back really enjoyed that. All right, if you would like to be part of the Cold Stone Creamery Birthday Club, please go to KUAM.com and register. You can use nicknames, too. Everything's good here. Let's just keep it clean. All right, but we do have a prize package to give away, so this winner's week of a absolutely delicious birthday cake, courtesy of Cold Stone Creamery, is Leanne Barcina Santos, who was born on May the 5th. Leanne, we are happy, pleased, and privileged to give you an extended birthday We'll get in touch with you and let you know how you can redeem your cake and have a wonderful weekend. All right, please stay tuned. There is much more coming up next. Closed captioning is brought to you by IT&E. Explore your world.
Off today, everybody, and welcome to KRB News Extra. I'm Jason Salas. If you are streaming us on YouTube or Facebook, we're glad to have you along for the ride. And if you're watching us live on KUM TV8, Half a day and welcome as well. I have three accomplished, beautiful, lovely local ladies here who are talking about the various aspects of law enforcement on the island. Three friends of mine, by the way, so I'm very, very to have on the KUM couch. A former KUM videographer herself, extraordinaire, Tanya Munya, now serving very nobly as part of the United States Marshal Service. So, half a day, Tanya, welcome home. Oh, well, thank you. Thank All you right. for having me too. I have not seen you in a really long time. We, also, we also play volleyball at the same time. That's, this is true. Yeah. This is true. Yeah, do you miss the game? I do. Yeah. I do. I miss the game, but I know the game doesn't miss me. So yeah. that's <laughs> fortunately, <laughs> fortunately we've both gone on to bigger and better things. Charlene Guerrero is of course a very good friend of ours and you're gonna be talking about some of the challenges and an obstacle course obstacle course? Or a there could be We're tactical not, challenge. Yeah, tactical challenge. We're not trying to we can't give out our little secrets. We're just gonna tell you exactly what we may be doing and so forth, um, to be prepared. So, so we keep it secret, right? Yeah. Okay, no which it's, it. which itself is a tactic. But I will be like throwing out some clues through um, Instagram. That oh, very nice. Yeah, ah. stuff that we may be doing. So we have tactics on top of tactics. Yeah. Very, that's so meta. Okay. Yeah. And I could, of course, have to give a glowing review and glowing introduction to my very beloved cousin, Jacqueline Terlahi. Half day? Half day. Hey, good to see you. How have you been? <laughs> Ooh, yeah. it's been fun. She was the smartest girl in seventh grade, and she's the smartest girl right now. So, <laughs> way, way smarter than I am. Okay, so, but we are talking about Law Month. Uh, Jackie, let's start with you because a lot of people tend to get like kind of confused. They're like, wait, there's Law Week and there's Law Month and everything like that. But, but this truly is like a celebration for those of you in the industry who uphold the law, defend the law, and practice law. Absolutely. You know, first of all, we started celebrating Law Day, it mm -hmm. was supposed to be Law Day. And what we discovered over the years is that Law Day just was not enough. So we've moved from Law Day to Law Week to almost Law Month. Uh, we've had many, many different events. Um, everyone's probably most familiar with our kids who do the mock trial programs. A lot of our parents participate in mm -hmm. that. Um, everyone saw the proclamation that we do with the governor, with the lieutenant governor, all of these different aspects. Uh, but what's coming up now is we've started a new program. It's called Jump for Justice. And so the idea, first of all, behind all of this is to give kind of knowledge to people. Most people don't understand what we do in the justice system and to give them a good understanding of what's happening. So this year in particular is extremely important because we're celebrating our 75th year of liberation mm -hmm. from Japanese occupation, right? So this year we're so celebrating this time period as we're calling it Evolving Liberties, Guam 75 years later. And why is that important? Because especially for the youth who are going to be participating in this program called Jump for Justice. Those youth, if you can imagine youth from 1966, they had no right to legal counsel. And you think about that, in 1966, we had no right to legal counsel as a juvenile, right? But as an adult, people who were living here on Guam had no rights prior to 1950, essentially. They were simply citizens of Guam with no U.S. citizenship, so they didn't have any guaranteed rights. And so this particular month in these events that we celebrate, what we're trying to do is to educate the people about what the rule of law is and to give them access to that law. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Very nice. Okay, so we're going to talk a little bit more about that as this, this discussion continues. <laughs> Counselor, that was a wonderful opening statement. <laughs> <laughs> thank you, Jason. I Th appreciate thank it. Thank you very much. Yeah. <laughs> um, okay, so um, Tanya, in your years now, and how long have you been? You always haven't been a U.S. Marshal, right? No, I was with the local law enforcement uh, community. I was a port police officer, a superior court marshal. I was a volunteer police reserve with the Guam Police Department before I became a deputy U.S. Marshal. Mm -hmm. What does it mean to you to be able to serve your island, you know, your, your home in, in the various capacities? You know, when I first got hired, I was sent to Hawaii and um, with every intention to come home. And I was glad to go out first uh, to another district to, to understand, you know, how this job was away from Guam. And so I was very excited when an opportunity presented itself to come back to Guam and to serve our community and to bring programs to Guam for the Marshall Service and to do a lot of outreach to let the community of Guam and the people of Guam know that, you know, the job like mine is attainable mm -hmm. by anybody from Guam and anybody from Saipan. Mm -hmm. what, what are some of the most common questions that you get asked as, as a marshal, like especially maybe like young people if you go out and like speak at schools? Uh, do I have to leave Guam? How long is the training? How hard is it? What, what do I need to be like you? And okay. th that's a big question from the school kids. Do a lot of people ask like, you know, do I necessarily need a 
degree in criminal justice to, mo to move on? I mean, it certainly helps. Yes, you, you, yes, that is, that is a question that everybody asks, and the answer is yes, you need a college degree. Okay. Yes. Very good. Oh, what, are some of, what are some other maybe academic disciplines that, you know, your fellow marshals come into it? Because not everybody goes the, the criminal justice route, right? No, um, we've had uh, people with education degrees, political science degrees, some sci uh, um, um, biology degrees and whatnot, mm -hmm. and some English majors. Okay, very nice. Well, we congratulate you on your success. We're incredibly proud of you, too, okay. as an alumni of KUM. So. Oh, yeah, thank you. Yeah. Thank you. And it's always good to see you. So, okay, Shirley, we are going to talk about the Hagen Games, the tactical challenge. Okay, this is our fourth year um, with the Hagen Games and um, with collaboration with Custom Fitness. Um, we are putting together a um, tactical challenge this year, something a little bit different I mean, that, than our normal um, I don't want to say CrossFit inspired uh, movements and so forth, but just something that we're going to just do different. At, and this time too, it's going to be at the courthouse versus at um, Custom Fitness. So we want to just and just do a lot of different things differently. Just something to just to take it up a notch. Mm -hmm. take and it up. does this involve? Who are the who are the competitors? Is it specifically like the tactical community, which would be no. you know some of like the more elite like GPD units and the marshals? Well, <laughs> well, we decided when we when we wanted to change up this 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 event, we decided to make it fun and team based. So team building, you know, move together as a team, mm -hmm. talk to each other, use your use everybody's strengths and weaknesses to their advantage, and the tactical aspect of it. And we thought that if we put the word tactical challenge, that it put a twist on the on the Hagen games. Yeah. And honestly, we've partnered with uh, Laser War Guam, and it's a laser tag company. Ah. And Charlene yeah. and I demoed uh, laser tag this past weekend, and we had so much fun, and we just looked at each other and we were like, these guys are going to have a good time. I'm glad you guys are bringing back laser tag, because typically I bring that up as a child <laughs> of the 80s. No one knows what I'm talking about. Yeah, <laughs> it's, it's, it's an amazing game. Yeah. Um, you, you, you know, it, it, it's in, in line with Law Week. Uh, and we decided to focus on using laser tag instead of the typical tactical challenge so that everybody can participate. Uh, Non-law enforcement, just people in our, in our judicial mm -hmm. community and family members and friends. Every, uh, this challenge can be done by, by, by anyone. I'm assuming this is gonna make a fantastic spectator sport event. Uh, absolutely, yeah. absolutely, yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, so if people wanna show up and get, like, get a good seat, for lack of a better term, like and, and participate or and at least observe and everything. On what time do they need to show up? The um, for the teams, show time is seven thirty. Go time is eight o'clock. Mm -hmm. um, Saturday, May eighteenth. Very nice. Yeah, and then also just to let you know what, with what's happening with the um, the challenge, it's it's a team card. We're gonna add the team cardio component, but also um, without giving away our movements and so forth. I mean our 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 little stuff. We're going to be pulling, carrying, pushing, um, swinging. swinging, and then of course the laser tag will be the, the last part of the event. Very nice. Well, you yeah. know, your, your cousins, I guess, as it were, in the fire, fire department community, you know, they have their muster challenge yeah. where, you know, you get like the federal firefighters, the local firefighters, and, you know, they all put their skills to the test. But at the same time, the, the key point being, you know, everybody's got the same training, even if they've never met each other, and they get to apply those skills. Yeah. 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 And this should be something that everyone can be doing. We're not like making it hard on anybody. <laughs> okay. Because we want everyone to be involved. Okay. So we started with my cousin. We're going to end with my cousin Prima. Uh, if people would like to find out more about what's going on with Law Month, is there a social media site where we people can check out? And if they'd like to ask Absolutely. any questions? Absolutely. We've got the Facebook uh, Law Week um, uh, page up. We've got the Guam Bar Association. We've got the District Court of Guam. If you go on the internet, you can find us very easily. Mm -hmm. um, all the information is out there, but I wanted to just say we're inviting also the lawyers to come out and laser tag one of them. Ah. So I, I'm, I'm calling out a challenge to the lawyers <laughs> to see if we can get as many lawyers out there to participate in the later laser tag, because then maybe we could sell some tickets. I can us. only imagine the punchlines <laughs> that are going to come out of that. It's like, see a bunch of lawyers yes. playing laser yes. tag. But you notice. That's worth the price of admission right there. <laughs> but you notice what we're trying to do as kind of a whole in a partnership between the judiciaries, the Bar Association, um, the mayor's office, uh, uh, thanks to Mayor McDonald. Donald who participates in all of this, DYA, the marshals, we're, what we're trying to do is get us active. So this is also part of not just learning the law, having access to the law, but encouraging everybody to get up and move, mm -hmm. um, which is why we have tactical games, is why we have Jump for Justice. Jump for Justice is a jump rope competition. 
And, you know, I don't know when's the last time you did jump roping, Jason? Uh, a couple of years ago. <laughs> and I was quite terrible at it. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So, you know, that's, that scene in Rocky when he's training it, take the exact opposite of that, and that's what I was doing. <laughs> and that's the thing, is we want our kids to get up and get active. Why? Because certain things happen with our bodies when we stay healthy, mm -hmm. and we like to encourage our children not only to be very intelligent, but to be healthy children as well. All right. And that's why, you know, DYA has allowed us to participate in a program that's going to happen at DYA. So also we want to reach children who are not just outside, you know, children who have maybe what some would call normal lives, but children who have contact with our justice system are just as important to us. Okay. And so that's why what we're doing is we're going to go into DYA. And so at DYA, we are going to be holding a fantastic competition for those children who are court involved. Okay, and people can find out more about this on the uh, on the law the law week page. Yeah, but unfortunately, they can't participate on the DYA event because okay. at the DYA event, that's specifically uh, concentrated just for those youth who are there. But we will be having another Jump for Justice program. We were originally uh, planning to have it in law month, mm -hmm. but we've decided to move it to the summertime. Okay. So, well, um, tell you what. Well, we got to run the commercial break, but when you guys extend law month to law quarter or you know <laughs> we'll, we'll certainly have, have you have all of you back on and find out what, what you guys are doing with the great work that you're doing for our community with the uh, respected law so thank you ladies thank you. we thank greatly you. appreciate it thank, thank you. you all right please stay tuned we're back after this A beautiful, healthy smile is an expression of confidence. The more confident you are about your smile, the more likely you are to fully express your feelings without having to worry about the way your teeth look. Before cosmetic dentistry, I didn't smile as much. I didn't have the confidence, and it shows. And since I've had cosmetic dentistry done, I feel 10 times more confident. I make my initial introduction with a nice big smile and a handshake and I just you know feel like it really is a relationship builder a nice warm smile and it makes the clients and customers feel more comfortable with you feeling confident and they feel that you're not just there for business that you're also there kind of as a friend as well so I mean it's amazing how powerful a smile can be a good smile <laughs> since your smile makes a significant impression on those around you it is important that it makes the impression you want it to make. Visitors make memories on our island. They contribute millions of dollars every year to our community. So what does that mean? Tourism keeps our island's culture alive and it strengthens our identity as Chamoru. Tourism creates opportunities for local businesses to thrive. The dishes I create feature local ingredients. These ingredients come from local farms and create local jobs for farmers like us. For every job we see in tourism, there are hundreds more we don't see. From teachers, to babysitters, to engineers, we, we all, all work, work in the tourism industry. Our visitor industry benefits everyone. It improves our income and gives back to our community. We need more opportunities for a better Guam. Kids in West for Guam. don't need to go anywhere else to get your news. One and done. You don't need to go anywhere else to get your music and entertainment. One and done. Oh, and social media? Yeah, we got you. KUAM Communications on multiple platforms from any device, it's your source to go to. Connecting Guamanians all over the world with home. One, is that done? One, is done.
The Good Life, all month long on the stations and networks of KUAM. Check the KUAM News app or KUAM.com for all program listings. Extra continues right here on YouTube, on Facebook, and on KUAM TV. I'm still Jason Salas, and thank you so much for watching us. Pauline Okada is here on the KUAM couch, and that means we must, Pauline, be talking about all of the amazing things that you guys are doing at, down at the Guam Museum. Absolutely. Thank you for giving us a few minutes of your time. Oh, thank you for inviting us. You Shout have the best to office, Museum. too. Yeah. Yes, it's beautiful, isn't it, yeah, down there in Again, yeah. Well, a, a nice, nice environment are certainly conducive to... Um, being productive. Oh, yes, it is. Mm. But yeah, you know, but we'd have to definitely give credit to the team at the museum. For sure. You know, it's not just me, it's a whole bunch of us that mm. are making the museum as beautiful as it can be. Many hands make light work. Yes, it does. Okay, so what have you guys got coming up? Because you guys always try and capitalize on, you know, like events and tie in, you know, the cultural exhibits and the history and the heritage of the Chamorro people. But Mother's Day is coming up. Yes. Um, May is a very important month. Yes, it is. What have you guys got? Well, first of all, for, for we're really busy this month. Uh, actually, this weekend, Saturday, May 11th, we do have our Aunt and Familia program. It's a monthly program, uh, you know, basically for families, you know, family day. And uh, this month, what we'll be doing is uh, we're planting trees. You know, we've taken up the challenge that the lieutenant governor has uh, put out there, the 100 Tree Challenge. And uh, at the museum, we'll be doing about 40. We're repurposing a whole bunch of uh, household stuff to uh, mm. do these plants and teach the, you know, the, the kids to um, nurture the tree like a mother's love. Now, appropriate, Mother's right? Day is coming up. Yes, uh, definitely. What kind of trees are they? Well, this month, what we're trying to do is we're trying to do calamansi, actually. Oh, very nice. Yes. So it's very useful around the house. And, um, yeah, sometimes there are a little, you know, a couple of challenges that come with uh, nurturing a calamansi tree. But uh, it's very popular. Great in iced tea. We use it in the cafe. So come and stop by and give it a try. Very fragrant also. Yes, it is. Wait, is a, cal is a calamansi tree the one, does it have the, like the pretty big thorns on it? Yeah, it does have a couple of thorns. Yeah. They're tiny, you know, the tiny and very full of seed, uh, seeds of um, yeah. uh, little citrus fruits. Calamansi is amazing. Yes, love that. Okay, I'm, I must ask, Pauline, um, the theater you guys have houses many, many events, but you guys always tend to work in these really, really cool movies. And I'm yes. a big movie lover. Thank you. Yeah, Thank do, you, you. do you guys have any interesting films coming up? Well, um, not in the theater just yet, but we do plan on uh, showing a couple of uh, uh of films uh, during uh, the month of July in observ observation of the 75th anniversary of our liberation. Oh, very cool. Can you give us like a little hint or is it a big surprise? It's going to be a big surprise. Hey, we're Pauline. working with, a, you know, we're working with a couple of groups okay. and, and other organizations to put that uh, that calendar together. You know what? That, that's just an excuse for you to come back and then talk about Absolutely. it again. Absolutely. You again. know my tricks already. <laughs> okay, so, yes. so what else can people do? And a lot of people don't realize this, but the museum is a seven-day-a-week operation. Actually, we've adjusted our, our operating hours oh. because sometimes we need to do some major ma maintenance okay. to the museum. So currently we're uh, open Tuesday through Sunday from 10 a.m. to 5 p.m. Monday is our day off, and that's what the day that we use to, for our staff development and also to maintain the beautiful uh, building. As long as you're open on the weekend. Because yes, that's, when, we that's when a lot of people would want to go there. And one yes. thing that I know some people say, it's like, okay, I go down to the museum. That's a great way to kill maybe... 20, 25 minutes. If you have a family, if it's you and your girlfriend, if it's just a bunch of total strangers and everything like that, you can easily spend at least two hours in the museum. Oh, yes. Easily. Yeah, when you said 20 minutes, I'm like, uh, I take that back. Yeah. About a couple of hours would, yeah, would be a, a good amount of time to take in both of the exhibits that we have. Currently, uh, in our changing gallery, we do have the Celebration Isang Song Guahan Siha, which is celebrating uh, uh, Guam's villages. That's open all the way till the uh, till June 2nd. Oh, and if I can mention that sure. on May 18th, it's uh, International Museum Day, and you'll be able to see the exhibit, the Changing Gallery exhibit, celebrating Guam's villages for free from 10 a.m. to 12 p.m. Very nice. Yes. Okay. And How hard is it to be, a, I mean, you're not necessarily the curator, right? Oh, no, not me. Yeah. How, how difficult a job is that? Because, I mean, you have to be a 
master of many different disciplines. You have to know history. You have yes. to know different languages. You have to be incredibly resourceful in everything. Yes, and you also need to have a degree. Yeah. Yes, we have a special curator in Stay house. in school, kids. Yes, please do. Yes, we have the special curator in house, but uh, I, if I can mm -hmm. mention, we have our hitas also that are happening at the museum. Good. Uh, in fact, we have a special hita this weekend, uh, May 11th again. Uh, it's going to probably be running uh, just right after our Ha'an and Familia. We have uh, Roman de la Cruz and we have also Car Carlos Madrid coming in to talk about uh, their experiences uh, with uh, sling throwing. And how it, how Roman and also Ben Guello Rosario mm -hmm. had won uh, back in Spain. Oh yeah, we're super proud of them. Oh yes, go yeah. guys! A lot of people are picking up like the sling. They're, they're like, wow, I never realized this aspect of Chamorro culture. Yes, and in fact, speaking of sling, uh, sling throwing, we are also going to be doing a Ha'an and Familia in June. That's going to be focusing on that. Uh, so tell so. you what, we're going to have you back in June just to talk about that. Then we're going to bring you back in July to talk about the movies that you guys coming up. Man. Yes, promise? Ever ever the marketing major, everybody. Awesome. <laughs> okay, thanks so much, Polly. We'll see you then. Thank you. Sizus Maasi. Sizus Maasi to you too. Agaloqui. All right. Please stay tuned. We are back after this. I am Jack Rainer. I'm a golfer. I'm a swimmer. A neighbor. We are parents of an athlete. I am a coach. We are volunteers. Let me win. Can I win? Let me be brave in the attempt. Make a difference in an athlete's life. Be a part of Special Olympics Guam. Keep our dreams alive. Get involved today. Guam's auto appearance specialist, Elegant Reflections, has been providing the automotive industry with professional detailing and car care products at its highest quality from complete detailing, full interior detailing, exterior detailing, headlamp restoration, hand washing, seat and carpet shampoo, engine degreasing, undercarriage cleaning, paint sealant, fabric protection, paint oxidation removal, and so much more. Visit us at our new location. Call 646-5555 for an appointment. Elegant Reflections, Guam's auto appearance specialist. Over 20 years of experience.